Soulful Creations. And today I'm going to be making the Sequoia bag from Shambhala. The Sequoia is such a awesome looking bag. It's so high end, just like all Shambhala patterns. I love the shape of it. I love these wide gussets and I love uh, the bottom with the contrasting fabrics. Um, I love this shoulder strap with the gate rings and you can just jazz this bag up so many different ways. I mean, you could add a tassel, you can uh, use some creative locks. I have a turn lock here, but you can do a flip lock. You can do magnetic snaps. You can do some nice edge uh, closure. Um, inside there's a, a zipper pocket and it's so spacious and roomy inside. You can also add a slip pocket on the other side if you choose to. Um, it's just really a great bag and I'm so glad to be able to do a tutorial on it for you. So um, enjoy the video and if you like it, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. So let's get ready to make the Sequoia bag by Shambhala. So I'm just gonna quickly go over the pattern pieces before we get started sewing. So um, first you're going to need to cut out two of the exterior main panels from your um, main fabric. And this, I'm using this um, snake print from Big Z Fabric. So I have two of those cut from my exterior fabric. You'll need your flat pieces. So there's two, um, they're different sizes. So there's going to be your flat panel A and your flat panel B. And I'm cutting that from my contrasting fabric. And this is the a spicy mustard mora vinyl from uh, Emmeline Bags. So I have one in A and one in B, okay? Also, I'm using Decaville Heavy as a stabilizer in my flap. You will also need to cut two of your lining gusset contrast pieces. And again, I'm using the Mora for those. You'll need two of those. You'll need two of the lining contrast bands. So I have two of those cut from the Mara. You will need your bottom piece and you will need one out of your contrasting vinyl and one out of your lining. I'm using waterproof canvas from Fabric Wholesale Direct. So I have that and I'm also going to be, uh, well, the I have the vinyl stabilized already with Decaville Heavy. And I'm also going to be adding a piece of foam. Um, that's uh, You don't have to do that, but I like to stabilize my bottoms with Decaville Heavy and then also a piece of foam. Okay. You'll need two gussets, gusset pieces cut from your uh, contrasting vinyl. So I have two of those cut from the Mara. And you will need um, a zip, uh, it says zipper facing, you can cut that out of the lining, but I, I use, I use a overlay. So I have my zipper overlay cut from the, the snake, the faux snake. Okay. Again, I'm using waterproof canvas for my lining. So you need two main, <clears throat> excuse me, two main panels and they are cut on the fold. So I have two of those. You need a zipper pocket piece. You can cut, this is for your interior zipper pocket. It's cut, you can cut it on the fold, but I like to cut mine in two separate pieces. So I just cut it two, in two, okay? You need two lining gusset pieces. And then I'm going to be stabilizing, with, I'm gonna be using some foam to stabilize. You can use Decaville Light or whatever stabilizer of your choice. But for this one, I like it a little softer uh, because it's not a super structured bag. So I'm opting to use some foam. You can use uh, fleece um, if you want. There's some different options there. So in addition to that, uh, to that you also going to need your uh, piping strips 
with some piping cord. I'm just using this cotton piping cord. Um, you will also need your uh, purse lock. I'm using a turn lock. You can use a flip lock. You can use a magnetic snap. Um, you'll need four purse feet. I have the screw on kind um, that I'm using today. You will also need eight grommets. I'm using this snap on kind. Um, these just snap together, um, but there's there are other kind of grommets, but you will need eight of these. So this is this is one pair. So um, eight sets, and then you'll need a few rivets. Um, and also for your interior zipper pocket, you'll need uh, a piece of zipper tape or um, a standard zipper and um, a zipper pull. So that's pretty much it for um, all the materials, you know. So we're going to go ahead and now get started sewing the Sequoia bag by Shambhala. So let's get started on our Sequoia bag by Shambhala. So the first thing is to grab your front main exterior piece. And we're going to add our uh, some of our hardware. So we're going to add the mail uh, piece to our turn lock. And we're also going to put our logo, uh, our uh, logo hardware, if you have one. Um, so there's markings on the pattern piece. So I've already had put place my markings on my exterior piece. So um, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and check and see where. OK, so I know what slots to use. OK, and I'm just going to line that up and make a couple of more marks here and I can use this little pen since they won't be seen okay so I know where to cut my slits here so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and just install the male version of my turn lock okay and as you can see i've already added my phone to the back that's the wrong one let me use this one okay. and i'm just going to press those in towards the center and i'll also just add a little piece of duct tape over that So I have that, and then I have the markings here for my logo, okay. I'm just going to center it right there where my markings are, and then I'll also mark my lines, my slip marks. And this is, um, I'm just using a placement um, that was on the pattern piece. But if you don't want to put your logo here, you don't have to. You can center it or you can place it on the back, whatever you choose. I'm just using exactly the placement marks from the pattern piece. Okay. And again, I'll just place a piece of duct tape over that. So now that's your front and we have our logo set. I'm going to set this aside for one second. I just want to make a mention about the flap because we're getting ready to sew the flap together. I just want to mention it because I didn't mention it when we talked about materials. When you cut out your flap, there's two lines. There's this red dash line and then there's this blue line. Okay, if you're cutting, if you're going to sew your flap right sides together like I am, then you want to use this red dash line. So this is if you're having a woven fabric for your flap or in, if you're using vinyl and you want to sew them wrong, uh, right sides together. But if you're going to leave your raw edges exposed, then you want to use this in, inner line. And then that way you would just top stitch them together, wrong sides together. So just keep that in mind, whichever way you plan to do it, there's two different lines to cut from. Okay. So I'm 
sewing my, I don't want raw edges. So I'm going to sew my right sides together. So I'm just going to match it up here. And remember you have one that's a little shorter, okay? And that's intentional. I'm just gonna add a few clips here and I'm going to sew these together at one quarter of an inch seam allowance. Make sure, I'm, again, I'm using my Juki 1181N. My stitch length is at a four. And I'm just going to sew quarter inch seam allowance, go all around. Back stitch really good, okay? And I'm just going around. When you sew curves, just let them let your fingers just sort of guide the material around gently. Get smooth curve. Just take your time. Back to the top, back stitch. Okay, so now here you can trim your curves. So when you turn it out, it's smooth. Um, you can use pinking shears um, if you wish. Sometimes what I just do is I just find it works really well to just trim it down to about an eighth of an inch just on these on the curve part here. Okay, and that's all I'm gonna do there. And then we're gonna turn it out. If you were using a magnetic snap, you going you would have your snap already placed. Um, on before you sew these together. But since I'm using a turn lock, the final the final hardware doesn't get installed into the end. Okay, so I'm just gonna gently smooth the seam out. And then now I'm going to add my stabilizer. So I like to add my stabilizer after. Okay, because this, if you add it before, if you add it before, it's just too difficult to turn. So I'm going to go ahead and just slip the stabilizer piece in. So you have to kind of fold it up a little bit, just roll it a little, and then spread it out. And make sure that you get those, get it in the seams really good. So. This is the front. So I really, I want it in front of the seam, not behind it. So I just work it in there and you can fill it and just get it pressed in there really well, okay? And just roll it, roll the seams until you get it exactly where you want it. And I can feel it's nice and snug and smooth there, okay? I'd like to get it real snug against the seam there. So, so I'll just add some clips here, just make sure. And then also make sure my seams are poked out good I just run this chopstick around just to make sure. And just add a couple of clips. So I'm just gently running the chopstick around the seam to make sure they're pressed out well. And Just do this before we top stitch. Okay. 
So once you have it all clipped in place, okay, now we're just going to, um, well, before we top stitch, that's why one piece is longer. We're going to take a piece of double-sided tape and we're just going to place it right along this edge here on the short end. Okay, so I'm just using one eighth of an inch double-sided tape there. And I'm going to peel that back, take that paper backing off. And now we're just going to fold this edge over. And you won't see this when it's attached to the bag. Okay. So just like that. So now you have no raw edge on the top there. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch. Okay. I'm gonna change my stitch list to a five. <clears throat> And I'm going to leave a tail hanging so that I can pull it to the back so I don't have to back stitch. Okay. So just take your time. Going around the curve. Keeping your seams rolled out. And we're going to stop right at the top and leave the tails so that you can pull them to the back. Okay, so we have a nice top stitch there all around. And now I'm just going to pull on the back to bring the tail, the tail to the front. I mean, to the back, sorry. Okay, bring that to the back and we're just going to tie those off. I apologize if you're hearing a little background noise, but um, this is a, a Saturday morning and my family's here. I usually like to do this when they're not, but it doesn't always work out that way. Okay, so now we have our flat and that's looking right pretty. All right, we're gonna install the other part of the turn lock later. Um, well, sometime I like to do it at the end. Um, I could do it right now, but I like to do it. I'm just gonna wait and do it, um, do it at the end. So I wanna show you next about uh, attaching the flap to the, to the bag. So um, let me just refresh my memory on the placement. Okay, so we have to grab now the back. So we have, this is the front, we have the back piece and on the, um, on the pattern piece, there's a placement line for the flap. So what I do is I just fold it right at that line and just place it right on top here. 
Okay, line it up with the bottom. And then I'm going to use my chalk and I'm gonna draw that, just put the line there so I know where to place my flap, okay? Right there. Okay, and make sure I just also add a center, so center mark, so I'm gonna snip there. Okay. And then also on the flap, on the back side, I just use my little tandy and I'm just gonna put a little center mark there. Okay. So, so this is my center. I have my center here. So, and my center there. And so I will just place it. It's gonna go right up against that line. Okay, just like that. Okay, so again, we can add a little double-sided tape just to hold it. So I'm just gonna put a piece here, right on that fold where we folded it over. And following my marks there, okay. And it's going to look right there. Just okay. make sure it's on the line. Okay, so now we have our flap. So now we're going to top stitch our flap on. We're going to do a one eighth of an inch top stitch and then a quarter of an inch. Okay, so we'll have two lines of top stitching across the flap here. Okay. So I'm gonna start right where those other stitches started. I'm gonna put my needle down there. And again, I'm gonna leave the long tails to pull to the back. Stop there. Okay. Now you can stop and you can uh, cut the thread here. But what I do is I just take a stitch right over the previous stitches. And now I'm going to go the other way and do my quarter of an inch. Okay. So I like to do a quarter of an inch from the, the top stitch. So not from the flap, the top of the flap, but so my stitching, they're going to be a quarter of an inch apart, okay? So now I'm gonna go back the other way. And stop there, okay? And now I can take those tails to the back. So I'll just do like I did before, and I'm just going to tie it off. Careful. If you have foam, don't burn your foam. Just the tails. <laughs> okay. Now, I also like to add some uh, rivets. So I'm going to place a rivet here and I will place a rivet there. And then now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my female part to my turn lock. I'm going to add that and then we'll be ready for the next step. So, um, so these, so I have these, they, this gets unscrewed here. Don't lose your screws here. 
talking to myself because I have a tendency to drop these little buggers. So I want to make sure and my daughter knows because she's always the one has to get down on her hands and knees and find them for me. Okay. So I'm going to keep this protective covering on for just a minute, but I'm going to use the back part to mark where I'm going to place my lot. So I have my marking here. I have my little dot there, okay? And I'm just gonna center it over that marking, okay? This looks pretty good. And I will just trace out the middle and then also the screw holes, okay? and I'm just going to cut that out. Okay, so you can use scissors or you can use your X-Acto knife, but I have those um, little die cutters. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to cut that out and then I'll come back because there's a lot of hammering involved. So I don't wanna do that on camera. And then I should have my rivets installed and then we'll be ready to go to the next step. I have installed my rivets and my uh, female part to my turn lock. I just wanted to show you. So I had this uh, perfect die cutter um, that was just the right size for my particular turn lock. So I have the whole set here that I got from Amazon. So I'll put the link in the description, you know, for anybody who's interested in purchasing it. So, um, so it makes it real easy. So you just set the die cutter and use your hammer, okay? Um, but they also sell these press plates for your rivet press. I, I just don't have one. Um, so that makes it even easier. So we're done with this for now. So now we're ready to prepare our, our gussets. So we grab our exterior gusset pieces. And I also wanna point out that I have made the marks already for my grommets. So you might wanna have that done as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to sew up these darts on our gusset pieces. So we're just going to bring them together, right sides together, okay, and match up. I have my foam. I have just spray basing my foam on. Use some um, spray adhesive to attach my foam, okay? So we're just going to go ahead and line up these darts. So right there, they meet up, okay? And we're just going to sew that together at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay. Make sure you back. And here you can leave the tails long and tie them off if you want. I mean, that's really probably the best way. Um, that's when I used to sew garments, that's what we would do. But I'm just going to go ahead and back stitch. Okay. And we'll do this one. Keeping the foam out of my seam allowance. Okay. So, so we have that done. Okay. And then now we're going to do the other. So this is what gives our gusset the shape. Do this side. Come off a little bit. 
I'll just add a little more adhesive. Maybe I missed some spots. Okay. I just don't like the, um, oh, I just pulled my thread out. Oopsie daisy, oopsie daisy. to keep moving. Okay. All right, come on, cooperate. Cooperate today. There we go. Okay. Well, now my machine wants to act crazy. <laughs> oh, we, you know, we all have our moments. And now you see I'm having mine, but this is par for the course. Let me make sure nothing went crazy with my threading. Okay. Let's try this one more time. You just have to see the real deal because, you know, nothing ever goes perfect all the time, you know. All right, so we're back in business here. It's a little hiccup. There we go. All right, so we have our darts. We have our darts. All stitched up, ready to go. Okay. One thing I also need to mark out, which I forgot, but no biggie, is the um, where we're going to start and stop our piping. Is we're going to add piping to these gussets. So we need to know where to start and stop. So we have this little mark here on the pattern piece. So I'm just going to place a mark on each side here. So I know where to start and stop. So we have that one. And we have this one over here on this side. Okay. There we go. Now... We're ready to get our piping going. So grab your piping strips and your piping cord. Okay, just like that. And I'm going to show you how I do my piping. So what I do is I just take a piece of double-sided tape. And I just, I don't put it all the way to the beginning. Okay, maybe like a, an inch or so, okay, and I just, doesn't have to be perfectly down the center, and I stop it around the same place on the other end, okay, and I do the same thing for this one, and this is just to hold my piping cord in place, okay, just like that. So we're going to take the paper off the tape and we're going to just add our piping cord. Okay. Make sure it's smooth. Okay. Same thing with this one. There's different types of pipe. There's different types of cording you can get. Um, this one, I just, it's just easy, easier 
for me to find. I just get it from, get a roll of it from Amazon. Oh. Okay. I know Way Wax sells piping cording as well. Okay, so once you have your cording down the center, okay, we're just going to just fold the raw edges together, okay? And I don't usually clip, because what I'm gonna do is now, I'm just going to base this clip. I use a, just a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Not a big deal, because this seam, this seam will not show, but that's just what I use, okay? And we're just gonna base. So I have my basting stitch set at a five, and I just keep my raw edges together, and I'm just gonna, Close this up. If you need to, you can switch to your zipper foot or a piping foot. I don't need the piping foot right now because I'm just closing this up. But when I get ready to sew it onto my bag, um, I will use my piping foot. So now my piping strip is ready on that one, and I just quickly do the same thing for this one. And this is if you're making your own piping. You can also buy store-bought, you know, piping already made for you. But I like to have piping that matches my bag, matches my vinyls. So I like making my own. Okay, so we're almost... We're ready to attach it to our gussets. So what I do is I'm going to find the center and just give it a little snip. Same with this one. And then I'm also going to snip the centers of my gusset right here at the bottom. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm gonna take one and what I do is I like to center, start with the center. So I'm just doing raw edges, okay? I'm going to fold my darts out to the side. You can fold them whichever way you want. I just choosing to go to the outside, okay? Now I'm going, I'm going to start getting around the curve here. So I need to add some snips here so that we're easing around the cut. So I'm just snipping right up to the stitches here. About every quarter inch or so, okay? And on this side as well. And then what I do, so I know I'm going to stop at that line here. So it goes a little bit past the line and we're going to bring it out. Just start to veer it off the edge there, just like that. And I just add a little clip to hold that. And then down here, it should curve nicely 
with those snips in there, it should go right around those curves nicely there. Okay, so like that. And then the same thing over here. So we'll just curve that off the edge, just like that. Okay. I'll just flip this over to make it a little easier. Go back this way. you have it clipped on so again what I'm going to do is I'm just kind of going to go right back over those stitches and just baste it on I will not need my um, piping foot until I attach it to the main panels so keep this veered off right at that point where you stop you want to curve it out away from the edge of the the uh, gusset. So we're just kind of pulling it away right at that line. And I'm going to start right there. And then just back stitch. And then I'll just, like I said, I'm going to just follow the previous stitching. All the way around, just just basting it on. Doesn't have to be perfect right here. Because we're just basting it on. And like I said, if it's more helpful to you to have your piping foot on now or to have your zipper foot on. But I find doing it this way, as wide as my presser foot is, I still have room. I don't, the, the piping cord does not get in my way. Okay. So now I'm getting up to the other side. I'm gonna make sure that I'm curving it off at the mark. I'm gonna taper right off at the mark. And that's it. So you see what I did? The marks is tapered off right at the marks there. And the rest is all even. So I have this overhang and we're just going to trim that off. Just trim that off. Alrighty. <laughs> I'm gonna trim this side off. Okay. From it even. So now we have that. I'm going to go ahead. I'll do the other one. Then we'll come back. Okay, so I have the piping on both of my gussets. So now what we're going to do is get ready to put our purse feet on our bottom. If you're using purse feet, um, this is the time. So I'm, I have my Decaville Heavy on the back of my bottom piece and I have the marks already for my purse feet. And I am using the screw in kind. So I'm just going to go ahead and just punch a small hole here. Right there. And I also like, I always like to put um, a little Peltex behind my purse feet. So just cutting some little squares here. Okay. And I'll just punch a little hole in those as well. Just for a little added. I know I have the Decaville Heavy, um, but this, and especially for the screwing kind, because sometimes I find if I don't put a little extra padding, then they're they're a little loose. So, um, so I'm just adding a little piece of Peltex. 
Okay, so I have my screws, my feet, and I'm just going to put it through the uh, pale tags and then through the back here. Okay, and then just start. Okay. And did I make the hole big enough? I don't like to make the hole too big because um, I, you know, I want it tight enough. So it looks like looks like I could have used a little bigger because the the post to these feet it's just a little bigger than I thought. So let me just go ahead and just make it a, just a little bit bigger. Some of them are real small and some of them aren't. So just a tiny bit bigger hole, not, not too big. Let me see which one, uh, yeah. So just a little bit, I'm gonna just make it just a tiny bit bigger. Just big enough for the post to go through. There we go. Okay, so now, once again, we're going to push that through. And get that started. Ah, uh, yeah, that's better. Okay, now it's going through. And now we can make sure it's screwed on. So just hold it from the front and make sure it's nice and tight. There we go. So I'll get the rest of those on quickly here. And the last one. Okay. And I'll secure it. Well, crash, bang, boom. <laughs> Secure it with a little duct tape. Alrighty. So we got our purse feed on. Okay, and I'm gonna pick up the little hardware that I just knocked down. Yet. Okay. So now I'm going to add my foam and I do cut it to size so it is in the seam. If you don't, if your machine can't handle it, just keep it out of the seam allowance. So I'm just going to base my foam on quickly. around with a half, uh, excuse me, with one eighth of an inch seam allowance. I had to add a little oil to the hinge of my scissors. They were a little squeaky there. 
know. Okay. So now we're all ready. I'm going to mark the centers here on the short side. Okay. Now we're ready to put our exterior pieces together. So let me grab my front and my back here. Okay. So now the first thing we're going to do is at the bottom to one of our exterior panels here. This is the front. So I'm going to add. Let me just double check the seam allowance. I believe it's three eighths and it is. So we're going to sew that on three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Let's go from this side. Three eighths of an inch. And Like I said, if your machine cannot take the bulk, please keep the foam or whatever stabilizer you chose to use out of the seam allowance. Okay. Now we're going to top stitch. We're going to bring the seam toward the bottom. Okay, so fold the seams down toward the bottom. And I'm going to top stitch right at the seam. One eighth of an inch. stitched. Now we're going to add the back the same way. So three a seven inch. Same thing on this side, we're going to top stitch with the seam toward the bottom. Just move some of these two dads out the way. I used this combo of materials before on another Shambhala bag that I just love. And I love this pattern too. So I thought, well, I'm going to use that combo again. If, you, if it looks a little familiar to you. I think I have that picture of that bag on my Facebook page. Okay. So now we have... Our bottom on, flap, everything's looking good. So now we're going to add those gussets. 
Okay, so that's why we make these marks here on the short sides of our bottom. So we're going to take one of our gusset pieces and we're going to go right sides together, starting right here in the center. Okay, so right there, matching up those centers. Clips here. Okay. Now I'm going to bring it up to the top here and match the top here. Yeah. Okay. And before I finish doing the curves, I'm gonna bring it around to this side and match the top here. The beauty of Shambhala patterns is that these gussets always, I mean, they're so perfect. Like, it's not a lot of, not, not, just not a lot of work on these gussets. I mean, she knows how to get these measurements just right. So if you're afraid of gussets, I would advise you to practice on Shambhala patterns because then you will fall in love with gussets, okay? You see that, how easily they just go around those curves there. No puckers. Okay. I still didn't base my foam down good, but I'll go back. Okay. So now we have that. So this is when I switch to my piping foot. So my machine does have a piping foot. I was so happy to get one because I used to do this without. So I'm gonna quickly switch out these industrial machines. There's really no quick way, no button to push and you just switch out. So you do have to remove some of the screw, okay? So this is a quarter inch piping foot. So you see the little channel? That's where the piping just sits right in there. And my piping has never been so easy. Okay. So I'm just going to switch that out real quick. Okay. Set that down for a second while I screw this side in. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Okay. All right. And now I'm just going to pull my thread to the bottom. There we go. All right. So now I have my piping foot on. So now I can just go ahead and start. So I can feel the piping cord under there. So we're gonna start at a, uh, I think it's a quarter inch. I think it's a quarter inch we're attaching. Um, let me just make sure. If I scared you wrong. Um, yeah, well. Yeah, I believe it's, yeah, it's a quarter inch. Okay, so we're going to do, start. And I'm gonna make sure my stitch is at a four. And I'm going to back stitch here. 
I'm going to make sure my foam is out of the way. And I... And I feel the piping cord going into the channel. And I know I'm getting close. Close. Without going over. I'm just moving the foam out of the way. Okay. As I go. But the foam, I can feel the, the cord. And I can feel that my piping foot is going right along the cord. Okay, so just take your time, press down, get it out the way. I have some foam there, but it's okay. Right. And I'm just going around. Just keep it. Press down out of the way. Make sure you don't get any puckers in there. It's the foot is going to find that channel, and I mean, and Find that cording and it's going to run right along that channel and give me like the nicest piping. I hope. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to jinx myself. I'll say it should, right? Be confident. It will. Okay. So I'm almost to the top. And And guess what? If it's not looking so perfect or as great as I'd like it to look, I'll just go back over it. Okay? So let's look at it and see if I was telling the truth. So I'm just going to quickly turn this out just so you can see. And we can see if we have to go back over anything. Okay? What do you think? Look at that. I think maybe could be a little bit closer right there. I mean, but who's going to nitpick, right? I think it looks great. I really think it looks great. So, you don't see any stitches from the basting. It looks pretty even all around. So, I'm going to go with that. Okay, and I do like my typing to stand out, so I do like it and I want to go with it. Okay, just make sure I didn't smash it. There you go, fluff it out. All right, so I'll go ahead and add the other side, and then I'll show you the results of that, and we can get our lining started. Hey now, so I went ahead and I've added my other gusset. The piping looks good, front and back, and the bottom. So exterior is done. So I, like I said, we're ready for the lining. So what I've done is I've already uh, done my zipper pocket. Um, I used the overlay um, and I, the bottom of the zipper is not closed because we're gonna use that to turn out the bag later. So, um, Please watch my zipper pocket with overlay video to see how I did it. I used the same exact method. I have a link to the video in the description for you. Okay, so I just uh, have done this many times, so I didn't want to bore you with it again. So now, moving on to the next step. After you do your zipper pocket, whether you use an overlay or not, you don't. This is the overlay. You don't have to do. You can just do a standard zipper pocket. But once you finish with your zipper pocket, now we're going to add these lining contrast pieces. So this, we're going to add this to the top of our main lining piece. So 
right sides together. Okay. And also on your other main, uh, the other side of your main lining, you can add a slip pocket too, if you want to. Um, I should have thought of that because I do like slip pockets in my bag, but that's okay. I didn't, and um, it's not a part of this pattern, um, but it is an option to add a slip pocket. Okay. So we're going to sew this on at one quarter inch seam allowance. I better be checking that bobbin pretty soon. Okay, and we're going to fold the seam allowance down toward the lining, okay? And we're going to top stitch. I think I hear my bobbin. It's getting uh, pretty light in there, so I'm gonna have to change it out in a second. Okay, I'm risking it with this top stitch in here. Living on the edge. Okay, so we're just top stitching at the seam. Keep the seam allowance down toward the lining. Okay, so once we have that done, We'll take the other main lining piece, okay? And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to sew it on at a quarter inch and then top stitch. I'm going to go ahead and put that protective covering back on my lock until I'm done. Okay. It's not protecting anything stuck to my arm. <laughs> so, quarter inch. In the comments um, on my video, if you watched my video, um, tell me how you guys started bag making, if you did, or if you're just getting started, let me know that too. I've been doing bags now for about seven years. I started out making clothes, mostly my kids and family, and. Um, one day, I just, I was like, I want to make bags. And boy, I just never looked back. No more fittings. <laughs> bags are one size fits all. And it's just so many different bags you can make. Okay, so now that we have our contrast band on our main lining piece, we're going to go ahead and attach our bottom lining piece and we're going to attach this with a 3 8 inch seam allowance three It's really rattling now. <laughs> so I better check it. Let me see how much bobbin thread I have left. You know, I'm just gonna check it real quick. Oh, 
Yeah, you know what? I can just keep playing a little bit. Okay, so we're going to top stitch just like we did the exterior. We're going to top stitch toward the bottom. So. Now on this side, I'm going to leave an opening to turn out, okay? So I won't be sewing the whole bottom. I'm probably going to, I like to leave a pretty big opening. So about like this here, that's about, about seven inches or so. I like to leave it as wide as I can. And so I'm just going to sew the ends. I'm not sewing this middle part. We will be birthing this bag. So three eighths. I probably didn't even have to top stitch the other side of that base either because I won't be able to top stitch this side once. Well, you know, because it will already be in the bag. So you can omit the top stitching here, but it's no biggie. I already have it, so I'm going to leave it. Okay, so I'm going to find my centers on these short side, just like I did the exterior. Okay. And we'll set that aside for one second. And we're gonna grab our gusset and our gusset contrast bands. Okay, so we have two of these and two gusset lining pieces. So just like we did for the exterior, we're going to sew our darts with a quarter of an inch. Okay. Clip it if you have to. have our darts. I'm going to do the same thing over here with this one. Yep. <laughs> Finally ran out. At least I didn't do it while I was top stitching. So let me just add a new bobbin. And we can keep it moving. have extra bobbins ready to save time. Okay. Alrighty. I'm 
my sticker here says, not today, Bobby, right? <laughs> Bobby said, yes, today. <laughs> today is today. <laughs> but it didn't get me too good because I didn't top stitch. <laughs> okay. So now we have those darts sewn up. And we can add, you can add these first. I really probably, it's wiser to add them first so you don't have this curving, but eh, you know, I think the pattern has you add them first. But uh, I'm being a little out of order today. Okay. So we're just going to attach these right sides together, longer side. We're sewing, not the short side. Okay, and these are one quarter of an inch. Okay, I'm going to add this one before I top stitch. going to top stitch with the seams down toward the lining. today with this thread uh, I always have to have this this is not my normal um, I think this is that celeric thread and this one for some reason I always have to have the tension a little bit tighter in order for it to act right and so sometimes it causes me to pull my thread if I don't pay attention and hold it So that one's done. We'll mark our centers here at the bottom, matching up the darts, and we'll get our centers marked so that we can add it to our lining. Ready. So now we're ready to add our gusset to our line, our main lining pieces here. So just like we did on the exterior, we're going to start here in the center at the base. And this time I'm going to, well, no, I'm going to still fold my darts out to the side away from the center okay and on this part make sure you match up make sure these are matched up okay so don't you know don't forget to pay attention to that part because you want it as to be as even as possible so i'm going to place a clip there 
then match the top. If your seam allowances were pretty accurate, then it should be good. Okay, same thing on this side. I'm going to match that up. Place my clip. This is waterproof canvas and it just has no stretch to it at all. So it's a little more difficult going around the curves. So just make sure you add some snips, not in the gusset, but in the main lining, okay? Just so you could get around those curves. Give it a little ease around the curves. And you still, if you're using cotton, it, it there will be a little more stretch. And you won't have to fuss with it. We're going to sew. We're going to start with a quarter inch seam allowance and we're going to increase to three eighths. And then go back to a quarter inch once we get towards the top. So that way your lining is not baggy. Okay, so quarter inch. Start increasing to three eighths, go around, and then end it back at a quarter inch. So this is side up. And I'm gonna get my stiletto here in case I need it. Like that, and then I'll gradually start to increase until I get to three base. Okay, making sure these two these stay lined up. And I'll go back over that a little. Okay, keep my zipper pocket out of the way. And like I said, waterproof canvas is just Especially this Otter text, it's very thick and heavy, has a PVC backing, and so it just really has no stretch. So just those snips really help. You really need the snips. Okay. Okay. I'll go back over the seams a little bit and we're making our way around. to keep that out the way so you can see what I'm doing okay so as we make it around these curves I'm just using the stiletto to just hold everything down I like the back stitch over the seams there and I'm pushing the fabric underneath so that it stays smooth underneath okay and holding that down as I go around the curve Push it underneath, get your fabric up underneath. Okay. And I'm still at three eighths of an inch. And I'm gonna start gradually decreasing to back to one quarter as I get past this seam here. Okay. So still at three quarters, I mean three eighths. Now I'm going to start gradually going back toward one quarter until I end at one quarter. Here we go. Not bad. Okay. Okay. 
no puckers. Looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. If you want to trim down, like I trimmed down this a little bit, just right at the where it's right at the curve. I just trim it down just a little so that it's not bulky inside my lining. Okay. Just around the curve. Okay. okay. And now we'll do the other side. And we just keep, I'll let you see how we do the other side because it is, it does get a little more difficult once you get the first side on. <laughs> you see what I'm doing here? You see what I'm doing here? Wrong side. <laughs> Make sure you go right sides together. Oh boy, that would have just hurt my heart. You gotta be watching all the time. Y'all pay attention to me. Yell at me and say, what are you doing? Don't do that. Have you ever been watching a video and you go, don't do that. You're doing that wrong. Don't do that. Okay. Alrighty. So matching these up. Okay. And clip. Getting close. We're getting close to putting this together. Okay. So let me just get my snippy snips. I'm just doing about a quarter of an inch. Don't go past three eighths because. And you'll be cutting into your seam allowance. Okay, so we just want to get that back around. Those snips help to spread the fabric out so you don't have that bunching, no puckers. But if you get a couple of little puckers, it's okay. Don't fret. This is the inside. Nobody is going to really see it. And if anybody wants to examine it that closely, you know, just tell them to go go buy a bag in a store. There, I've seen puckers on designer bags. Okay, so we're already so gusset side up, quarter of an inch to three eighths, and back to quarter inch. Like before. Mm -hmm. okay. Gradually increase. Make sure the fabric is smooth underneath. And guide it. Keep your stiletto there to keep things from shifting. And then also another tip for sewing on a gusset is you can start with a 1 8 inch seam allowance and just to get it basted on. And then that way when you sew the regular seam allowance, you won't you won't have to worry about it too much shifting. So that's another trick that you can use. And also, you can staple you can use some double-sided tape. There are different different tricks that you can do until you get comfortable sewing gussets. Okay, but like I said, in Shambhala bags, you really don't need too many tricks. Okay, so again, I'm keeping the fabric smooth underneath. Coming back around. 
other side. Making sure everything is lined up. It might I might have made no, I think I'm good. I thought I moved it, but I think I'm good. Okay. Now I'm going to start going back toward one quarter. Snap my bobbin thread. Okay. Um, so you can see in there. Looks good. Looks good. I'm gonna trim this down a little bit. trash right there okay some went on the floor okay you got me <laughs> some actually went into the bag too <laughs> okay now we're ready to start putting it all together okay so we have our lining which is wrong side out and we have our exterior, which is right side out. So now we're going to fold our flap down out of the way. And we're, I like my zipper pocket to the back. So I'm going to stick my exterior right into the lining. Well, before I do that, sorry. I also, I already marked the centers here in the gusset at the top, but I forgot to do it here. So I'm just going to do that real quick. Mark my centers here. So that way, make sure I'm matching it up. your flap down stick it into your exterior it's going to be snug that's what you want you want it to be snug okay. push it down and then we just start matching up the seams and our center marks okay so just push it down in there I'm gonna start here on this and then start clipping then when I get to the seams I'll put, push one seam one way, push one seam the other way, and I'll just nest it right in there. Just like that. And click, okay. It should all match up nicely. Don't be afraid to push everything down and get it all in there. These curves, if, if you're new to this, you might want to mark your seam allowance before you clip everything together. So just take your marking pen and measure. So I think the seam allowance is 3 eighths of an inch to put everything together. Let me just make sure, double check. Yes, 3 eighths of an inch. So just make your 3 eighths of an inch mark so that you'll know where to sew. So I'm going to match this seam here. Okay, get make sure these curves are matched up. I have up and we're getting to the finish here this is the part where the nerves can get a little jangled 
because you don't want to mess up. So just take your time. So I'm matching the center here on the gusset. And then back over here with the seams over here. Nesting my seams. That helps reduce a little bulk there too. Okay. Okay. And we're almost done clipping. We'll do this side over here. Remember, it's going to be snug because our lining was sewn a little bit smaller because we want a nice fitting lining. We want the lining to be snug enough. So we sewed the lining a little bit smaller. So it's going to feel like it doesn't want to fit. But we started the seam allowance both at a quarter inch. So it should fit here at the top. Okay. okay, we're almost done. We're almost done here. Getting it all clipped. Okay. All right, so it's all clipped. Looks a little crazy right now. So I'm going to show you. What I do, because, um, well, first, let me fix my bobbin, because my bobbin, my bobbin thread broke. Okay, so let's fix that. Okay, so what I do is, when I have a bag like this with lots of curves, um, I just go, I start, so I'm going to sew inside like this, okay? And I'm just going to find a place to start usually right in the center. And my first thing to do is, I'm just going to do one eighth of an inch. Get it all sewn together, okay? Now I don't have to worry about, oh, is my seam allowance just right? I'm just doing one eighth of an inch. Uh-oh, something crazy with my bobbin. I think my bobbin sounding crazy, but I don't want to continue. Hold on, let me just fix that. So hold tight. This is the problem I have with the Selric thread sometimes. It just, my machine is like, ugh. But I had bought a bunch of it and I had kind of learned how to um, make it work in my machine. So we're gonna do that. Okay, so let's see if that helped. It sounds crappy. All right, I have to go adjust. I'll come back after I figure out what's going on. So I got my, I had to switch out to a new needle because um, it wasn't the thread, it was the needle. So we're good now. So I'm just going around the one eighth inch seam allowance. Okay, and this really helps in keeping everything together. So when I go back and do my 3 a 7 inch seam allowance, I won't have to worry about anything moving around.
see, so we're almost back to where we started. Everything stay nice together. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now it's all together. Now I don't have to worry about the clips in my way when I'm doing my real seam allowance now, okay? So, it will go together. This part will be a lot easier to do now. So just give it a place to start. I'm going three eighths of an inch now. You'll take your time around those curves. Flip your bag around. You see how much easier it is now because I don't have to worry about anything shifting and moving out of place. It's better than staples because I don't have to worry about taking the staples out later or poking myself with the staples. <laughs> That's what I do all the time. Whenever I use staples, I always poke myself. Okay. So we're almost back to the beginning. Okay. Going around one last curve here. looks good it's all sewn um we can trim this down a little bit um which i will because we have all these curves too so i'm gonna tr i'm going to snip into these curves okay um the, i'm gonna snip into these concave curves first so once they go in, do not snip your stitches. Don't get too, too close. Okay. So I'm just going around and snipping in. Okay. And then the ones, these, I'm just going to trim. Trim it down just a little bit. I'm not going to trim the whole thing, just around these curves. Trim that. Trim that down. And you can use pinking shears. Okay. And I'll just leave the rest. Be just fine. Okay. So now we're ready to birth. I'm a mother of seven. This ain't nothing like birthing babies. <laughs> but it can be tough. So we have our hole here. We also have our pocket. We can pull it out through the pocket or we can pull it out through the bottom here. I'm going to pull it out through the bottom. Okay, I think it's big enough. So don't be afraid to really get in there and grab your bag. 
it's, you know, some wrinkling, it, it's, it's, it's inevitable. Um, but you can get them out. It's going to be a little tight. Don't pull too hard. Just gently try to coerce the bag through. Squeezing it. And I'm really just holding the bag and pulling the lining over. Gently. Doesn't look gentle, but... start to push push <laughs> okay get my bag there we go not too bad more of vinyl it will wrinkle a little but I've always find that with a blow dryer um I can usually get those wrinkles out with no problem okay so I'm not worried about it it's very forgiving now, and the same with my lining. It will steam and it will look nice. Okay, so we're going to push the seams out, push the seams out all around, make sure everything looks nice, push the lining down into the bag. It's looking good. Everything's matched up nicely. And you roll those seams out. And roll those seams. Still have to close our lining up, so don't worry about it right now. The main thing now is that I'm going to top stitch. So I like to top stitch before I close my lining up in case anything goes wrong. And I need to get back inside. So I'm gonna start clipping. To hold, hold everything in place for my top stitching. And this bag has such a wide opening um, that uh, we don't, if, if a bag has a tight opening, I will actually turn the whole thing out and have the, in, the exterior and the inside and I'll top stitch from the inside. But since this one is kind of wide, I can, um, I can get it under my machine without having to do that. Um, one day I will get that a cylinder or that's on my wish list so and then things like this would be much easier I believe but hey we work with what we have and you know and I'm thankful for what I have so we're going to finish clipping around, rolling the seams. I really like all this mustard color. It's like one of my favorite colors. Okay. So we're almost done. All right, so I'm gonna finish clipping this, getting it ready, and then we'll come back to do the top stitching. Okay, I finished clipping, and what I did was I did turn decide I wanted to turn it inside out. So 
because I wanted you to see what I mean by having it inside out and top stitching from the inside. It just makes it a lot easier when you have a flat bed. So <clears throat> that's what I did. And now we're ready to start top stitching. So I'm gonna start, I like to start from the back and I'm gonna start from the gusset, okay? And we're just going to top stitch one eighth of an inch. Or maybe a little more. I like to do just a slightly little more than an eighth, one eighth of an inch. Okay. And I'm just going to back stitch a couple of stitches. And we're just going, making sure our seams stay rolled out. See how this makes it a lot easier to top stitch this way. Now, when I get to these seams, it is a bit of a hump there. And I don't have, never bought a hump jumper. <laughs> but what I do is I do keep these little scraps of vinyl. So I just put it under my foot there. It's kind of even it out and that keeps hopefully me from getting any wonkiness under the bottom okay. I'll find out okay. so we're just going around take your time around the curves in your bag make sure everything stays smooth underneath okay I'm coming to another seam so I'm going to grab that piece of vinyl again place it under the bottom here That usually does the trick, but you just sometimes you just never know. Sometimes I'm too afraid to look until the end. <laughs> okay, my daughter gave me a thumbs up that we're looking good, so I can breathe. Okay, so. And Getting around. Okay. Coming across the back. Stay down so you can see. Getting to our last seam here. So, one more time, since it seems to be working. And we're almost to where we started. Let me give it a final tap. back stitch. All right, Woo. we made it through. So let me trim these threads and we'll turn it back around and see what we got. Okay, let's burn that a little bit. Yeah, we got a little loop right there. I usually fix that with a with my needle. So 
So um, it just looped a little bit. See, and then I'll just fix that. It takes a little finagling here, but what I'm doing is I'm just gently pulling the thread because it did, it just looped up just a tiny bit on the back side. So since if you just pull it a little bit, you can even it out. See, that worked. That worked there. I snagged the thread a little bit right there. So let me just fix that. See, so I, I was able to just pull it a little bit on the other side and there was a little loop there and now it's not. So now the rest, all the rest of the corners look good. Okay, so now we're just going to push everything back around. Push from the bottom. Okay, so now I what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my zipper pocket out. This is why we left it open. And the lining that's still open, I'm going to push it up through my zipper pocket. Just like that. Pull it out. And I can just sew up my lining. Okay, so the part that I didn't sew up earlier, I'll just add a couple of clips there. And I will sew that. So we're just gonna sew the lining closed now. I'm just starting and stopping where I left. Okay, right. if you hear anything, my dog click clacking around out there. Okay. So now we have that. We can push that right down. And now we're gonna close up our zipper pocket. So just about a quarter of an inch or so. Add some clips. And then just bring the sides together. going to sew that close one eighth of an inch okay. or less try to get as close as I can Pocket in. Make 
sure the corners are pushed down good. Okay, and the lining is pushed down good. I top stitched that side. That's why I was saying you're not going to be able to do the other side, but it's okay. It's okay. All right. So now the only thing left to do is put our grommets in and attach our strap. So um, what I will do is I'm going to take one half of my grommet. I'm going to put it right over those marks, center it over those marks. Okay, and get my pen here, and I'm just gonna draw those circles just like that. Okay, so I know where I'm going to punch my holes. Okay, it's a little light if you can't, but this one is not. Let me grab another one. So that's better. Oops. Well, don't do it that way. <laughs> that's why I'm using something that can be removed easily. Okay. That just wipes off. Okay. So I'm going to do that for all eight of my grommets. Okay. And mark them out. Okay. Then those um, those cutters, those sides that I told you about. I have the perfect one here. So this one, I'll just place it right over the mark like that, and we're just going to. So flatten your bag out. Make sure the lining is smooth. Everything is smooth underneath. And we I would just lay this here right over the mark, just like that. And with my hammer, and I'm not going to do all of these. I just got my regular old hammer. And I'm just going to hammer it until it makes the hole. And I'm going to do that for all eight and then we'll come back snap the grommets in and add our strap and we're done with our sequoia bag okay so i've got all my grommets on now i just love the finish on these flat grommets i have all eight installed um just you know use your rubber mallet just but give it some good wax and you can also add um some glue for extra security Okay, so now we're ready to attach our strap. If you haven't already, don't forget to watch my video on how I did this strap with no raw edges. And um, I'll make sure it's in the, uh, the description, okay? So we're just going to go ahead. It has these gate rings on. So uh, what you do is just pinch two of the gate rings together and then feed it through and then pinch the other two and feed it through okay and these are one and i think one and a quarter inch maybe even one and a half no i think these are one and a quarter inch gate rings okay so um so one side's on and we'll do the other side so again pinch and feed it through and then pinch and feed it through Alrighty, and then we'll just close up the flap. And she's all done. So I'll get any little wrinkles out later, but it doesn't look too bad at all. I just love the shape of this bag. It's so classy and I just love this. So thank you. I hope you enjoy watching the video. I hope you learned something. I hope you'll make the Sequoia bag by Shambhala. 
Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And, um, you know, I'll have a copy. Uh, I'll have a link to get a copy of the pattern in the description as well and any other supplies that I've used. And thank you again for watching.